Let me read what's on the let's let's let me read what Dave and, and the front page have written about this. All right. We have an update on what the technical capabilities are expected to be for WWE content on Peacock, particularly when it comes to live events. A line in the current issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter about features like rewind, fast forward, or the ability to start live programming at the beginning if you log in after the show starts, not being available right now, and possibly never being available, is correct about right now, but the part about them possibly never being available is not the case, according to sources at Peacock. Well, you know, never is a long time. It but it is. may feel like forever. <laughs> the features mentioned are not in play right now, but changes are expected to be made as times go by. Uh, those at Peacock say they anticipate making live pause, restart controls, and scrub a bar previews available before SummerSlam. That's August. Uh huh. Regarding search. Entity-based discovery is on the product... That sounds like something Peacock would say. (laughs) Entity-based discovery is on the product roadmap, Mr. Meltzer. Buzzwords, bro. And they are anticipating offering searching by the name of the performer by September. (laughs) We're on the fast track here. WWE Network launched on Peacock yesterday. So there you go. They have found a way. Remember when they they uh, they did the new WWE Network and everybody hated it? And they were like, yeah. it sucks and we can't find anything and it's terrible? Oh, you will reminisce here between now and uh, and September or so. But don't fear not, not forever. You will only suffer for months on end after being forced into this transition. How did Major League Baseball get this right and everybody else got it so wrong because it was the... Well, Major League Baseball, Mike, they probably didn't rush. Well, and they had experience. I mean, they were doing the NHL center ice, which I had for a while. That was really good. I saw the MLB was was good as well. And WWE, the way it started, you know, there was glitches there. But, you know, I... (laughs) I amazed how many I amazed how many problems are across all lines of all of these streaming platforms now that I've seen more and more of them. You know, there are few that are really well done. I think Disney is is nice from the layouts I've seen on different types of devices, but like Peacock, they have a lot of good content and things like that, but it's just it's all I, th- I think it's an awful layout and i think that's going to be uh, an issue that a lot of people have with it too on top of, of some of the small issues and some of the wwe specific things it's just not a very good layout you know i can give you all some wisdom as a man with a net worth of 10 million dollars mm. and that is that you can't always just throw money at the problem Even if you have billions of dollars, which is slightly more than I have, sometimes if you rush something to market, you just can't get it the way you want it on launch. That's what we're dealing with here. Well, you just or you get the wrong people to do it. it. Because, it's not the wrong people. It's like they made Brian, this deal the like three weeks ago or four they weeks did, ago or but, whatever. Well, yeah, but the, the, this has been an issue for them. They have had this now since last year. I'm trying to think of when we were as Xfinity customers that we first got the the beta testing on this. Like this is like when it comes to the layout and stuff like this is what they wanted. This is what they decided upon. You know, when you look at HBO Max and Netflix and this one and that one, like this is what Peacock decided to go with. And it's like much like Pluto and others where they have a they're all their streaming stuff like NBC now and their kitchen nightmares, just a, a constant stream of programming. And I assume WWE's got one of those, too. Like, that's a very basic kind of lineup. OK, it's like your cable guy fine but it's all the other searching and all the other ways to try to find things where it sucks and i have pretty good internet when it comes to searching for things people with slower internet it's going to be even worse or people trying to do it through their cable box if they have an old cable box trying to like maneuver through it's like a computer or a phone that's old where it's slow and it's just again this is why Peacock and why NBC Universal, how they decided upon this, I'd love to hear because it doesn't seem like a whole lot of people love it. Doesn't feel actually seems like seems like nobody loves it. 
WWE on-screen personality Charlie Caruso is reportedly done with the company and is not expected to resign when her deal is up. Talked about this a few days ago. Fightful first reported there were backstage issues when the 34-year-old was consistently late for interviews for Raw, specifically with Randy Orton and Sheamus, which led to her being removed from TV. Vince McMahon was reportedly told about what was happening and, quote, took exception to the situation. <laughs> PW Insider reported Friday she is done on TV and is expected to leave. The recent hiring of now. Kevin Egan as a backstage correspondent and the host of Raw Talk essentially confirmed it. Her last appearance was on the February 22nd edition of Raw Talk. Bring in the Irish boy. I mean, I can't imagine why she would be late to do these interviews. Probably memorizing the dumb script they wanted her to read. Or because she was doing ESPN and, and a bunch of other stuff, and, and maybe it's not a priority anymore, and, and they're more offended about that than, than anyone. They just don't like it when somebody doesn't need them. Uh, it can drive Vince to maybe want that person back down the line just so he could say that they came crawling back to him at some point, but uh, they don't like this, and they feel as though that everybody's interchangeable, and we talked about that in, in a way that they are, but there have been people like your Corey Graves or your Caruso's or your Renee's that actually have stood out. And when they leave, you know, it does leave a, a much bigger hole. You know, the fun, the funny thing about this, uh, this new fellow that they've got, this Kevin Egan, Kevin Patrick, if you watched his Why debut, they had to change his name to that. Why? If you watched Why? his debut, we're up against a break here. Let me get this out. Mm -hmm. If you watched his debut, his very first interview, like, he was so nervous that he botched the entire thing. But at the end of the day, the bar is so low that I don't even think anybody noticed. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Canadians What's pants, with these people. Canadians' pants and folks? Where the fuck do you find a pair of Power Ranger underwear that fits a grown, and l much larger, by the way, than a grown man? They only sell them in kid sizes. What the hell do I do? And I don't remember whether he called No me shit, they only sell them in kid sizes? Well, they didn't think of that. So he had to buy... Men's large fruit of the loom white underwear, and then he bought like four pairs of the kids' underwear, and then the seamstresses had to cut out all of the Power Ranger designs and stitch them onto my custom-made adult Power Ranger underwear. The rib was. This is the weirdest story you've ever told me. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.